Today in the news, we got some AMD, Nvidia, and Microsoft. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. As you might have seen plastered all over the web, they have officially announced the 4000 series of APUs. All of the standard Ryzen and Ryzen Pros and their low power GE variants. Unfortunately, those are currently limited to OEMs, which means we can't buy them alone. Nope, none of them. Not the Ryzen, not the Ryzen Pro, not the GEs. That's understandable from the company's point of view since according to them, the APU sales numbers of days past are around 80% from OEMs. Now, don't be alarmed. AMD is actually planning to release APUs for desktops in standalone too. In a briefing call with Anantec, AMD said that there would be a launch of future Zen 2 APUs for the consumer market compatible with 500 series boards. The fact that they specify 500 series means it might be exclusive to that one. Now, why would AMD create this split? Why not just have the current 4000G series released today available to the public? There's only one thing that comes to mind for me. They want the whole standalone stack of APUs to be better than the last generation. So far, even though AMD claims that the new series provides up to 60% faster performance per CUs, most of it if not all of the gain is due to the frequency uplift. And if we do an apples to apple comparisons of the two generations quad cores and eight thread CPUs, the 4300G and 3400G, the old APU is still 50% faster in graphics thanks to almost double the amount of CUs. That's if we strictly look at the teraflops. I'm sure AMD has other tweaks that narrows the difference, but nothing that can close a 50% gap. So yeah, that's my theory. We might see APUs with more CUs from AMD in the future. It's just a bummer that they might be exclusive to the 500 series boards. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, we got some Nvidia news. Now, hey, I know what you're gonna say. Your water retention levels are getting pretty bad, but you have to take this news with another grain of salt. This information comes from Twitter user Kat Corgi, and apparently this next gen RTX 3080 would surpass the RTX 2080 Ti by about 20%. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all the information. No idea on what tests were used or if it's ray tracing specific, but the information seems to be corroborated by other Twitter leakers. If we just take it as is, it's great news. I mean, despite the much higher heat output at the rumored 320 watts, this would bring us back to Nvidia's leapfrogging days. For a while, Nvidia's old TI cards would be crushed by the following non-TI version. For example, the GTX 980 mostly beat the 780 Ti, especially with driver updates, and the same thing happened on the next generation with the GTX 1080 crushing the 980 Ti. With the 2000 series though, the 2080 would beat the 1080 Ti, but not consistently and not by very much. The 1080 Ti still had a lot of punching weight, especially with custom variants. Fast forward to now, and with this 20% faster rumor, we're back on track for a nice leapfrog in performance. Hopefully, the rest of the lineup follows up with the 3070 leapfrogging the 2080, etc, etc. In Microsoft news, it looks like the Xbox One X has reached its end of life. The company has just announced that the production of the console and its newest iteration, the Xbox One S All Digital, will stop production. The standard Xbox One S with disk drive though will continue to ship globally. This is a little odd given the Xbox One X is the superior console. In my opinion, it would make more sense to keep that one going. I'm guessing they make more money on the One S. Maybe one of the reason is because the One X might prove to compete with the Series S. So far, all the rumors point to the Lockhart console, aka the rumored Xbox Series S, to have four teraflops of GPU performance. Now, I know that teraflops is not the be all end all of performance indicators, but it is a third of what the Series X will deliver. That's just me speculating though. And lastly, also in Microsoft, it looks like the Surface Neo is far from complete. The dual screen tablet equipped with the new minimal Windows 10X operating system was first teased to be available for the holiday season of this year. But according to ZDNet's resident specialist, Mary J. Foley, the operating system, Windows 10X, would be delayed until 2021 and the dual screen Neo device to 2022. I hope that Microsoft hasn't finalized any of the specs for the device because the next few 
few years are going to bring pretty insane performance uplifts in mobile SoCs, thanks to both Intel with Big Dot Little and AMD with Zen 4. And that is pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. I do want to give a quick moment of silence for my 40 inch display, which died a couple of days ago. Rest in peace, my boy. You gave me six good years. And as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I've been doing